Welcome to The Author Show, where we feature new authors and books from fiction to self-help and everything in between. You'll find it all at theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. And now let the show begin. Hi, this is Linda Thompson, your host for The Author Show. Author Jean Gill has written Someone to Look Up to, A Dog's Search for Love and Understanding, but it's from the dog's point of view and in the dog's voice. So it would probably be easy to say that today we're talking to a dog, but that's not correct. (laughs) It's not an easy task to talk from a dog's voice, but Jean seems to do it well. So Jean joins us today from Provence, France, and I'm really eager to get started. So Jean, welcome to The Author Show. Thank you, Linda, from both my personalities. So that's a woof from him as well. Jane, will you give us a quick overview of someone to look up to, A Dog's Search for Love and Understanding? It's the story of a dog's life told from a dog's point of view with all the adventures and the misunderstandings that happen between people and dogs. You've written several books in several different genres. What was your inspiration to write a book about this dog and in his voice, no less? I've been owned by six Pyrenean Mountain Dogs in my dog ownership, and it's a breed I love very much. I've had plenty of problems with dogs, and in dealing with those, I came across a wonderful dog trainer, Michelle Hasbrook, and he invited me to Switzerland to work with him. And while I was there, I got caught up in the factual side of dog training but I think for most people it's so much easier to understand a dog's viewpoint when it's told as a story and I just kept going back to this idea that people needed to see what that dog was thinking when people get up to all the things they do thinking they're doing the right thing by the dog. I love all animals but I'm really partial to cats so would a cat lover benefit from reading your book? Well, one of my friends actually doesn't like any animals. And she said the book was a complete revelation. And she felt it was about understanding people, about understanding different cultures, and about meeting somebody else halfway. It's just that that somebody else happens to be a dog. Interesting concept. So tell me, while writing someone to look up to, were you thinking of any particular type of reader? Yes, I was, but not one particular person. I spent a long time on dog forums in France when I was choosing my puppies, and I listened to an awful lot of opinions on breeding and on dog training. And some people were actually very proud of some fairly unpleasant ways of dealing with dogs. So the breeder in the story is a very good breeder in terms of doing all the things that a breed is supposed to do for health and for socializing, but she doesn't love her dogs. And somewhere along the way, I think breeders who are trying to make money out of what they do have a choice between loving their dogs and making a living. How would you describe your writing style? I tend to use some poetic vocabulary for description but it's also fairly lively conversation in dialogue even when it's a dog and that was one of the difficult things was to try and convey dog communication but using human words and I settled into the style that seems to me to suit Sirius as a character this great Pyrenees who wants to do well, who wants to be a good dog, but who's a big dog, who gets into trouble, who doesn't understand what people want from him. And the language has to convey something about his character while being in human rather than in dog. I mentioned that she'd written several books and you've been writing for a long time, but you're also a really good photographer. Do you lean more (laughs) towards writing or towards photography or do you have an equal love for both? Thank you. That's a big compliment. I do earn a living from photography as well and I love them both. And what I do is prioritize one year the photography, one year the writing, because my books, particularly the historical novels, take a year to research them. 
So while I'm doing the research, I prioritize the photos for going out on shoots. I did a model shoot in Paris that was a lot of fun. And then the year when I'm writing my book, the book comes first. I become quite obsessive when I'm into the story. Did you take the photo of the dog on your book cover? Yes, I did. That's one of my great Pyrenees. And I, when I work with my cover designer, she looks at my photos. And if there's something that she feels is going to work, then we work on it together to come up with a cover that's got the feel, the emotion that goes with the book. And I think she's done a wonderful job with that sense of adventure and intelligence and the face of the great Pyrenees. But I'm a bit biased because it is actually my dog. (laughs) Is someone to look up to similar to anything else we may have read? No, I think it's quite different. I have read another book from a dog's point of view that I thought was very good, but a lot of them are very sentimental and are just a way of really telling stories of their dog's lives rather than actually exploring what's going on from the dog's point of view when the human is trying to train the dog or trying to get the dog to do what the human wants. And I haven't come across anything with that background in dog training underlying the story. And I did spend a long time working with a top trainer. So without that, I couldn't have written this book. Jean, you wrote, and I quote, by the end of four months writing this book, I was a dog, unquote. How long did it take you to develop what I'd call a dog's style? It came surprisingly quickly, but I think there are different parts of the book. And in the extract that I'm going to read you, you hear the way the dogs as a pack together create a style that I think is very close to what I hear when I listen to them barking at twilight. So it came fairly naturally, and then I looked back at it to check, and occasionally I found it was a bit too human. So, for instance, dogs don't care about colour, they don't see colours. So anything that was relying on colour too much in descriptions, it just didn't work from a dog's point of view. But dogs have such a sense of smell So to actually be a dog and feel the world through my nose was part of finding that style of writing and the dog's viewpoint. That's really interesting. So tell me, are the stories in your book all happy or do you include some sad ones, including animal abuse? There are sad parts in it. There's one incident which is cruel, but it's skimmed over because I didn't want the book to give opportunities for anyone to respond by enjoying actions which hurt dogs. But it's an adventure story and within the adventure the dogs do tell their true stories and some of them are sad. I would say that even where they're sad there's always hope and within that you can see the way the dogs support each other through some of the tough times. Like humans, really. Is there a message in someone to look up to that you'd like your readers to remember? There is, and it's in the title. The title suggests that what not just dogs are looking for is someone to look up to. But what that actually means is explored in the story and can't be summed up in one word. It's not just respect. And some people think that they can get respect from their dogs by hitting them. And that because the dogs will behave well, they've won. It doesn't work like that. And what someone to look up to shows is that dogs need role models and they can learn aggression from their masters just as much as they can learn good behavior and love. What are you writing now? My historical novel set in the 12th century. I'm probably best known as a historical novelist, and I spend, when I'm not being a dog, I'm actually a medieval knight. (laughs) That's quite a change. (laughs) I mentioned in my bio that you're talking to us from Provence, France, yet your bio says you have Scottish parents and an English birthplace. How did you end up in France? 
Yes, I've had a nomadic life because my father was a soldier, so we never actually lived in Scotland. The longest I stayed anywhere as a child was two and a half years. We moved all the time, which was quite difficult sometimes. But I think that's given me an outsider's perspective that's useful when I'm writing because I can see things that those who are too used to them don't see. And we lived in Wales from the time I was in my 20s. And I was a teacher there. So I've adopted Wales as my country and I probably still have a little bit of a Welsh accent despite being here 15 years now. And when my husband retired, we decided that we'd had enough of being rained on for 25 years. So we moved to Provence in the sunshine and it hasn't rained here since June. We need the rain now. <laughs> so tell me, on all of this nomadic life, did you always have dogs? No. From the time I was very small, all I wanted was a dog, and we couldn't have one. And my parents thought they could buy me off with a hamster, a budgie, you name it. Well, they're not dogs, and you show me any child that doesn't know the difference between a hamster and a dog. (laughs) So how many dogs do you have now? I have two at the moment. Sherlock and Watson were both adopted from an animal shelter. They were abandoned hunting dogs with different issues. And they remind me of some of the characters in my book. And I've met some of the dogs since then who are just so like the dogs I wrote about. Will you share with us a reading from your book? I'd love to. This is Twilight Storytime in the Animal Shelter. Twilight the violet hour, when your eyes turn wolf, ready for the night hunt, or ready to prevent the night hunt as you guard your flock on the mountain beneath the stars. Assume de Gaia doesn't need to be taught to protect. The instinct is deep in our blood, along with the courage to fight bears, wolves, and wild dogs. Twilight is the call of the wild to the wild, the unleashing of the inner wolf to the ancient battleground of dog-eat-dog. The great protectors of Sumdagaya legends, Caesar, Achilles, Boudicca, had all been able to tap their inner wolf and control it. Rip out an enemy throat and lick a friend's was the protector's maxim, according to Mother. Her brother worked the mountainside and had prepared from puppyhood, learning from his aunties, uncles and human. He told us, the difference between great protectors and good protectors is a matter of seconds. Great protectors can switch from enemy mode, rip throat out, to friends, lick, in one movement. And the dog that takes too long to switch is doomed, whichever way he gets it wrong. And you must feel the bond that gives you strength, the bond that links you with your flock so you will protect them with your dying breath. This Sumdagaya woke to twilight, sheepless, penned myself. I could see the start of nightshine in the other's eyes, and some restless pacing told its own story of inner wolves. Story time! The howl came from a pen downwind of me, so I had no idea who started the call. But it was taken up all round the compound until Jack barked, Newcomer first! And the silence of listening dogs invited me to begin. Between dark and light, between wolf and dog, I howled my tale to the unseen voices that echoed mine as they lived my life with me. We sang the mountains and my brothers, my choosing and my undoing. It isn't fair, my voice spelled out. It isn't fair, sang out around me. I didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong, the pack agreed. And Mark will come for me, I howled. He promised. He will come, the voices echoed, reaching for the crescent moon that glowed in a darkening sky. He will come. I was hoarse as I finished the big story of such a little life. He will come. Jack nudged my leg. Sleep now, little brother. We keep watch over you. He barked an ending to the twilight. The dark has risen until tomorrow, my friends. Until tomorrow rose the chorus, and then I dropped into a sleep deeper and blacker than under river.
Oh my gosh, I love that. And I love hearing it from a dog's point of view. That's wonderful. So tell me, Jean, where can we learn more about you, about your other books, and most of all, where can we purchase someone to look up to, A Dog Search for Love and Understanding? If you visit jeangill.com, then all the books are there. There are buy links and there's a lot of information about me, my books, and of course, my photographs as well. Jean, I've really enjoyed talking with you today. I love the idea of reading a book about a dog from the dog's point of view. This is unique, and it has me eager to get started. I'm sure your book has captured the interest of a lot of our listeners on both sides of the Atlantic. When you publish your next book, will you come back and chat with us again? I would love to, and I'll be checking that I've converted you from a cat person to a dog person. I almost think this book should be required reading for anyone that has a dog, or even more so, anyone thinking about having a dog in their life. The author has done an excellent job of pointing out many mistakes people make when dealing with canines as told from the dog's perspective. At the same time, the author still conveys the love, loyalty, and trust that forms the bond between man and dog, making it a very positive story. That was from a review for someone to look up to, and it serves as an encouragement for all of you dog lovers out there to pick up a copy of Jean's book and start reading, and you don't even have to be a dog lover to enjoy it. And I thank you for listening. Please visit theauthorshow.com to listen to other featured authors. These interviews are available to book buyers worldwide, on demand, every day, 24-7. And for those who like audiobooks, please check out our audiobook store at theaudiobookmarket.com. If you have written a book and would like to be a guest on the show, visit theauthorshow.com, complete the interview request form, and we will contact you shortly thereafter. The Author Show is a great way to market your book by getting in front of your target audience with a high-quality interview that will make a real impact. Please visit us again as we continue to bring you extremely interesting books and really wonderful authors on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. Find out more about authors and their work at theauthorsshow.com. Theauthorsshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.